He created us. So He knew we didn't need to be made to be made perfect. We just need to accept His salvation and accept His love. And then that completes us or that makes us perfect in the Lord's eyes. Amen? Because I can tell you right now, if anybody in this building is trying to reach perfection, you're never going to get there. Amen? And I'm going to... This, as I said, this is going to be the most unusual service that you have ever probably been in. Because of what I'm going to do this morning is I want to use this outreach kind of as, a, as something that we look at. But I also want to look at it that this is deeper or has spiritual implications in everything that we do. The first thing that always bothers me, and I'm not preaching against other churches or anybody else doing anything. I'm just telling you this. The first thing that bothers me about church is we're all inclusive. Amen? We, we have church every week. We stay in the four walls. But how many knows the Bible told us that we are to come in and have church to prepare us to reach the world? But everything we as churches do, and I don't care if they're big churches or little churches, Look and see, and I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody or, or say this is good or not. I'm just saying, look and see what churches as, as a whole, what we are trying to accomplish. And if we're not reaching the lost, if we're not getting out where the people are lost, how many of those very few wonder in here lost? Yeah, Amen? Yeah. Most of the time people come to church, it's because people in this building has already... I was going to say harass, but they've already asked them to come to church enough that they come. But there's already a repertoire between those two people and it's even something that you've already probably had talk about something about the Lord with. About that. And so the Lord began to show me this morning as I was getting ready and I had, you know, message prepared and all that kind of stuff. And so here's what I wanted us to look at just for a moment. What is the greatest resource that we have in America today? What is the greatest resource in the world today? Our children. Our children. And I was looking at our education system. Anybody looked at where we rank today as Americans as opposed to the rest of the world? Can I tell you this? That is not the children's fault. That is the adult's fault. It is people that's in leadership. They're so more worried about what make and model a child is instead of worried about if we're educating them and we're not educating them, we're worried about babysitting them and make sure they feel at home. It just getting started. And believe me, everybody's going to be touched in this service. Nobody is going to be <laughs> exemplified or excluded. So I started thinking about it. I started saying, you know, Lord, we hear this scripture all the time. Be ye a doer of the word and not a hearer only. But how many times, how many words have we heard in this church? How many words throughout our life have we heard? And how many times have we actually done something with what we've heard? If we just preach that God loves the world out here and all they see is just preaching love and we never do anything to feed or help or do anything to do charity in this world, then how can they expect to look at a church with, with, a church with love and say, I need some help. But we've got to do something to reach out and to do more than just what we're doing because we've got to do something that's going to affect our church in a way that's going to affect us spiritually and numerically. Amen? Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise God. I was thinking about it all last night. They were talking about they weren't going to, you know, necessarily going to do this next year. We don't, not for sure. But they were talking about maybe not because all these other churches are doing it. And I, I was, <laughs> so it's bothering me. I was thinking, what can we do? And I was thinking, in its place. And then I was thinking, well, shoot, we need people in church. Won't we just start having like on Sunday morning, we'll just feed them after church and we'll have people that's homeless come to church and then we'll feed them afterwards. Do something. <laughs> if we're not going to do one thing, let's do something else. But let's just not sit here and twill our thumbs and wait for the Lord to come back. <laughs> 
Waiting on the Lord is not waiting at a bus stop like this. Waiting on the Lord is like a waiter. What can I do to you for you? A server. You know, you look at that. We're supposed to be serving the Lord. But how many of us to go into the world and the table would be that world. To go into the world and say, let me serve you for a change. Let me do something nice for you. And can I tell you this? If you do something nice for somebody, they'll turn around and look at you like you're crazy. Because they don't know how to receive somebody being nice. So what I was looking at is, if all we're professing is Christianity, then we put on a show. But if we do something to impact our lives and impact the world, then it'll change everybody that's around us. Now, I'm going to say something right here that's probably going to be uh, one of those things that goes over most everybody else's in here's head, but I like, to, I, I like to bring sports into things sometimes. I was watching them go into the Hall of Fame. He happened to be a linebacker. I watched all his career, and he played for Miami. Well, he was one of three people at that position that ever made the Hall of Fame under six foot tall. And he's like 5'11". So, I mean... He was able to do things at his size that he wasn't supposed to be able to. They had already drafted another linebacker that was going to take over the middle linebacker, backer, but whenever he come in, they had planned on him being a special team, and he come in with his size. It didn't matter, and he come in and played with heart. And after the first game, the coach cut the big linebacker that he'd signed and said, you're my starter. And in all of that, I was watching, and I listened to this one part, and here's what I want to get to. Anybody ever been a part of a team? Come on, raise your hand if you have. How many knows it's a blast and fun when you're winning? Isn't it? It, it is it's like everything goes your way. But how many knows when you're losing, it exposes all of your flaws and weaknesses? Now, I'm fixing to wrap somebody's head in here. And it's liable to be mine. It exposes our weakness. We are a church. We are Christians. We are not on a losing side. So quit acting like losers. Can somebody say amen? amen? That's good preaching right there. Because all we do when we act like losers is we point out each other's flaws. But if we realize that we're on the winning side and we're not losing, then we should have a bond like no other. Let me tell you something, friend. If we don't get this, folks, this church is doomed. It'll come apart at the seams because if we don't have unity and love, if we're not fighting for one another, if we're not coming in here and wanting to do something for God and say, God, it's not about me, it's about you. Okay. He was able to speak to me and say, y'all walk around like a bunch of losers. That's the Lord. I don't want to walk around like a loser. I'm not losing. I'm going to heaven. I'm healed this morning. I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood. I've been delivered this morning. What have we got to be a loser about? Why we walk around? All losers do is walk, walk around moping with their head down and just moping around because they're always losing. Well, can I tell you this? Here's what the Lord spoke to my heart. If you do something for Him instead of doing it for yourself, then you'll never stop winning. Yes. Amen. Amen. Next portion of this, we're fixing to get somebody else here. Just wait, we're coming around. We'll get everybody. <laughs> you have to give me a minute, though. I ain't preached like this in a while, so Whew, I'm a little tired. Okay, next round. Ooh, we got light spirits on there. Thing. Okay, give me a minute. I can take a break. All right, next portion of it. We came to do this ministry today. That's that's the outreach. It it can be any outreach. It can be anything that we do. But what I'm saying is, if we don't do it together, and if we don't do it for the Lord, then the Bible says it's in vain. Everything is in vain if it's not for the Lord. Now, I'm just going to say this, and I, I don't want it to be offensive to anybody, but when we're doing a ministry, 
Do we realize we are being God's hands and feet? When we write those names on that paper, when we take that child and they see those clothes and be able to go through the clothes or whatever, whatever transpires, the haircut, or wherever it is back there, whenever they walk through that door, they're either going to feel decision, dissension or love. Even in church. And if they come in and see a bunch of... I'll go back to the losing just for a minute. If they come back and see a bunch of people back there that acts like losers, they ain't going to never want to go to church. If they come in and see a bunch of people aggravated at one another and harping at one another, they're never going to want to come to church. But if they come in this house and they see people that love them, that we're not concerned about ourselves, I'm not... Here's the thing. You've got to get your own emotions and your own feelings out of the way. It's got to go. You can't have that. If you do, you cannot have the Lord. It'll always be that. But if we get that out of the way, then we can begin to minister to people as they walk through. And there's going to be people that not only need to have school supplies, but they need to be ministered to mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And we've got to be ready for that. And that's being a doer. And I hear her only. Okay. Next step. Okay, next group of people can come on up. <laughs> okay, here's the next group. <coughs> if we're doing something from God for God, and I'm I'm telling everybody this right now, you can have it any you can you can feel any way you want about it. But I'm gonna tell you how I feel this morning. And I've got the microphone and I'm the pastor of the church. I think if people's going to come and bring this stuff up here, I think we be ought to be more interested about giving it out than we are finding stuff that we want. I'm just... Now, now I'm not saying any of that's wrong. If you want to get anything, that's not, you're missing the point. The point is not that. The point is, is that this is about given to somebody else. It's not about giving to the church. Amen. And like I said, we, we had a policy. And I'll tell everybody this policy this, this year. This was a policy. If you brought, if you come and got something from the church, they had a policy that you had to bring something back. That was... And listen, if it's for our kids and they need it, our kids go to school, bring them on through. Let them be the first to get everything. Amen. I don't mind them doing that. But what I'm saying is, when we start this thing, if we're not careful, it comes into more about me than it does about what we're doing. And here's what the Lord showed me about it. These are people, and, and, and we know there's probably going to be some come through today that probably don't need the things that we offer, but it is for everybody. We're not excluding anybody. Amen? We want everybody to be ministered to. But I don't want to do anything that I might take away from somebody else. Amen. And I'm, I'm just saying that because... And then somebody told me, well, Brother Todd, I thank God. And that's where we get into a trouble. We start thinking about what God accepts and what He don't accept instead of what His Word says that He is and that He isn't. Amen. Praise God. Now, whatever happened, that's fine. But well, what I'm telling you is this. This is how we need to look at outreach. Outreach, you know what we get out of it? We get out of it the blessings of God. After we do everything that we do, we're laying treasures up in heaven. And can I tell you today, I need more treasure in heaven. I need to lay up more. I've not been laying up enough. I feel like there's more that this church can do in this community. And listen, if everybody wants to start doing one thing and, and we have to do something else, but I want us to do one of two things every time. I want us to bathe everything that we do with prayer and that we make sure that it's more spiritual than it is physical. And the next part is this. As those kids come through and they deal with getting all their school supplies, getting all their clothes, I want to just make one final thought about this. 
Each one of us today, and I know I wore a flag shirt. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to wear, be, wear something comfortable so we would know we'd be up here all afternoon. Uh, but anyway, the last last thing is we we worry about what we look like. We worry about our clothes. We worry about our makeup. Or not makeup for me. <laughs> kind of sound funny for me. But anyway, we worry about our hair. <coughs> We worry about the color. We worry about the style. We, we're so into, you know, we, our, our outfit has got to match with our kids' outfit. And it's got to match with the car because whenever we get out, we all got to pop that color. Poof. <laughs> I'm, I'm just picking at anybody. I, I'm just playing. This is what I want to get to right here. We spend a lot of time worrying about our outward. And we're about to help people worry about their outward. But they have no idea that they're in darkness. They have no idea that they're walking without any light. So what we have to do is we have to put the spiritual part in it. And I want to say this first and foremost to anybody in here that might have kids going to school. Thank God you buy them clothes. Thank God you get them stuff to wear. Thank God you get them stuff to take to the school. But can I tell you this? There's nothing more important than you praying over them whenever they leave for school every day. And say, God, instill you in them. Whatever you desire, instill in them today. Keep the enemy away. Protect them. Protect their minds. Protect their ears. Protect their eyes. Amen? We should be as worried about our inward man as we are about our outward man. And the thing about it is this. How many in this room that if you had, you know, if you had some kind of ache and pain in your body and you had to go to the doctor, you'd take forever to get to the doctor because you hate doctors. But if we have a hair mix up, well, we can get a an afternoon appointment with the hairdresser. We got an emergency over here. We called 911 and they patched us right over. We need to be concerned about our inward man. Amen. We need to be concerned about what's happening on the inside of our life. Because we do everything we can to do our best to wear a nice shirt and a pair, pair of uh, pants and something that, that we think look good on us. Amen. And then somebody tells us later, what was you thinking? But praise God. Thank God for adventurous people. Just keep on being yourself. But please, we're living in this world. And Jesus is coming soon. And every distraction around us is trying to pull us away from spiritual things. Everything. What happens in our life? The more busy we become up front, the more we have to take time away from something with the Lord in the back. Amen? How many of us today as Christians, and I'm just going to close out with this, how many of us today as Christians, and I don't want you, don't raise your hand, this is not for nobody else to see, how many of us as Christians, every day, we put at least two hours and 40 minutes in prayer? That would be 10% of our day, I guess, or something like that. That be close. I'm not good at math. Somebody else with math have to do that. That'd be 10% right there. If we're going to give 10% of our tithes. Well, I, I know that's a big number. Let's jump back to this. How many of us as Christians that we put aside, I'm not talking about doing it while you're doing something else, but we put aside every day time to read God's Word and to pray and to med meditate upon Him. That means sit there after you finish and just meditate upon the Lord. And can I tell you this? When you go past just the prayer and you start into the meditation, then the Lord will begin to speak to your heart. He's wanting to know, are you willing? It's kind of like whenever we see the battle in front of us. This is who we have. This is who we're going to battle with. Are you willing to battle? And then we all come together. And we move together. But then I'm reminded about a man named Gideon. 
Gideon had a great army in the upwards of tens of thousands of men. And the Lord told him, He said, we can't have that many soldiers. And Don't you like the Lord being positive like that? He said, go down and let them drink. And whatever drinks a certain way, that's going to be your army. And all of a sudden, they're down to 300 men. I mean, you could imagine his thought. Well, he was already kind of skittish about it if you read the story of Gideon anyway. But all of a sudden, he put a fleece before the Lord. All of a sudden, he began to realize that God had already promised him. It didn't matter how many men that he had, God had already promised him the battle. And here's what the crux of the whole matter was. God basically told Gideon this. He said the 300 you're going into battle with is going to follow you to death. The other men would have turned with fear and run at the first sight of the battle. So God had to get out of the way the people that were not really interested in being spiritual or drawing closer to God or wanting to fight for God or wanting to be a soldier for the Lord or wanting to be a man of God or a woman of God. All of a sudden we get to a point that we realize if we really going to see this thing, either God's going to show up or we're going to die. You know, that's what Gideon had to come to in his life. But he knew God spoke something to him. And all of a sudden, he realized and the battle was won because God knew what he was doing at the beginning. And he was trying to get all the chaff out of the way so that all could be left was that that was of faith. Amen? How many of us today, how many of us look at the battle in our life, and you can raise your hand to this, you look at the battle of what you're going on through or what your family going through, going through and and it seems in, insurmountable anybody raise your hand now come on be honest there's things happening right now in our life that we need god to move we need god to move for us and how many times do we come in and out of this church and we're promised that god will heal we're promised that god will do these things well we better start bombarding heaven we better start getting around the horns what they call the horns of the altar again and starting to pray and to believe what God's Word declares. Because we are golden assembly of God. Everybody in this room? You are. I am golden assembly of God. But more than that, we're the children of God. So first and foremost, we represent Him. But then we represent this church. And whenever people come inside of this church, I want them to feel the love of God the love of God. If people come in here for an outreach, I want them to sense something different when they walk into the house. 